This is a practice exercise from page 210 in the textbook. We're going to practice calculating wavelengths and frequencies using information about the speed of light and other wavelengths and frequencies. So we take a look at the first problem. They're giving us some radiation with a wavelength of 640 nanometers, and they're asking us to calculate the frequency. Well, since we've got a problem dealing with both frequency and wavelength, we want to use an equation that gives us the relationship between these two variables. And that equation is C, the speed of light, is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So they give us the speed of light in the problem, that's up here. We have all the information we need, we just need to make sure our units are going to work, and then we need to see what this equation looks like when it's rearranged to solve for frequency. So to solve for frequency, it's going to be equal to the speed of light over the wavelength. And I know the units of the speed of light are meters per second. So that means that the units of wavelength are going to need to be meters in order for them to cancel out for me to be left with units of inverse seconds for frequency. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to take these units of nanometers and convert them into units of meters so that they'll cancel with my speed of light. In order to do that, we're going to start with the 640 nanometers, and we're going to use the conversion that a nanometer is equal to 10 to the negative ninth meter, and that'll tell us that we actually have 6.400 times 10 to the negative 7 meters, and this makes sense. Nanometers are very, very small, so it's going to be a very small amount of meters. So now we've got the units we need. We're ready to solve this equation. We know that the frequency is going to be equal to the speed of light, which is given as 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. We're going to divide that by 6.400 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. So our units of meters are going to cancel out. And we're actually going to be left with units of per second, or one over second. And that makes sense because the units of frequency are hertz, and hertz can also be expressed as one over second, or second to the negative one. We're going to have four significant figures in this answer, so our final answer is going to be 4.684 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds, or seconds to the negative one. The next problem, we're doing something pretty similar. But in this case, they want us to calculate the wavelength, and they're giving us the frequency in megahertz. So we're going to use the same equation, speed of light equals wavelength times frequency. We just want to rearrange it to solve for wavelength. So in this case, the wavelength is going to be equal to the speed of light over the frequency. Again, we want to watch our units. We know the units of speed of light are meters per second. And we need the units of frequency to be in units of per second, so second to the negative one, so that we'll cancel out and end up with units of meters for wavelength. So what that means is we're going to need to take this information that's given to us in megahertz and convert megahertz to seconds to the negative one, or inverse seconds. So in order to do that, we're going to start with the 103.4 megahertz. We know that there are 10 to the 6 inverse seconds for every 1 megahertz. This makes sense. The prefix mega means million, which means we've got 1.034 times 10 to the 8th inverse seconds. And again, it makes sense that this is a big number because mega is a prefix that means larger, specifically by a factor of a million. So now we can solve for wavelength. All we need to do is use the speed of light, which again is 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. We're going to divide that by the frequency, which we just got as 1.034 times 10 to the eighth inverse seconds. Units of per second and per second will cancel, leaving us with units of meters and rounded to four significant figures, we will get 2.899 meters for a final answer. And again, this should make sense. So we were talking about radio waves in this problem. Radio waves have one of the longest wavelengths on that electromagnetic spectrum. So they are the last thing on that diagram, which means they have very, very long wavelengths and a wavelength of about three meters. So 
pushing 10 feet. That is a very reasonable size wavelength for a radio wave. We I like to remember that, that radio waves can be about the size of cars. So radio waves are very big, as opposed to going all the way to the other end of the electromagnetic spectrum, those gamma rays, gamma rays have very, very small wavelengths. So again, biggest thing you want to do when you take care of these problems is make sure that your units are canceling. So pay very close attention to the units that they give you the speed of light in, the units of frequency, and the units of wavelength. Make sure you're doing any conversions necessary to get all the units to cancel out to end up with an appropriate unit for whatever variable you're solving for.